lubricate because we're sucking in the coldest water. The uh, petcock, of course, is all squared away at this point, and we're good with that. By the way, the radiator's got uh, 44 rows across it, and there's almost no restriction. You can blow through this thing till the cows come home. This is the outlet up here, and of course, another support. Now, I use the radiator supports against the existing brackets for the air conditioner, which are rather strong aluminum braces. So I didn't puncture or drill mount anything. This is all just stuck on there with heavy duty wire ties. This is a better image of the bottom right corner. You can see what you've got there. You've got this bracket and this wire tie holding it. I put a half an inch of foam in the back so that the radiators can't wear one another. I also added a little foam on the bottom and this is actually sitting on the bottom brace across the bottom of the car so that the uh, radiator is soundly supported on both sides and it's got that foam so that the radiator is not touching any metal anywhere. Once again, here's the power steering out of the way. We'll explain that much later, but I got all this clearance now. I got nothing but freedom up here in the top. And this year area here is all going to get used. I'm trying to slow the camera down. This is kind of cute. Let me move hands around. This is a radiator cap. It's a stout cap. Whoa! But the advantages of it are that I can actually take the sucker off and put it back on again. So now I have a completely isolated radiator system. This radiator here is going to be used strictly for the inner core. It's got its own drain down here. It's got its own fill. It's got its own pressure cap and overflow. And uh, it's got its uh, return set up so that it's going to the pump with the shortest distance possible. The pump, when I get new larger hose on it, is going to go straight up to the intercooler and that's going to feed the intercooler pipes up here and then they're going to come back down to the radiator. So it'll be a completely sealed system and this guy up here, the old, the old reservoir tank, it's going to be only for the automotive uh, radiator, not for the intercooler. Just a little point to note here, these are the uh, fittings I used to have in here. and I cut, it, I cut them out because they're going to be in the way of Project Next. There's just no room for them. So I just welded in a quarter inch uh, fitting that I uh, stuck in there. It was pretty simple. All you got to do is just take a piece of paper, lay it on this push it down with your hand you can get the exact pattern you take that pattern and you lay it down and it will sit right on top of the aluminum that you need I had my template over here somewhere and uh, it gives you the exact uh, cutout that you need to fill this up I might find that before I get the next video so that's where we stand at this point just about ready to hook up the uh, supply side to the intercooler then we'll be set to uh, crank it up Okay, got the thing installed. Got a temporary test here. I want to check it out. Haven't even measured it before, so this is the first time ever. If I ground this wire, if I can find a good ground, the uh, pump starts. And we can see what's happening here. Got a lot of bubbles through here. It's burping and trying to get it going. I wanted to test the flow, see how much better it is with a low restriction uh, heat exchanger. Now, with the original factory, I got one and a half gallons a minute. With the uh, LET, I got up to uh, 3.7 gallons a minute. And with my improved design, as it were, I was getting um, 3.1 gallons per minute with a lot more heat exchanger. So we're trying to get the air blood out of the system here. And we'll see what's happening. But it's already installed. The hoses all kind of wrap around pretty nicely and we're just burping the thing to see what it'll do so it's still burping as you can see so we'll just get all the air out of it get the thing uncorked and be set to go like I said I got it set up so I can run the uh, pump strictly with the uh, wire here all I have to do is ground it and the relay comes on starts pumping so that's where we stand Okay, I've been bleeding this for about five minutes. I keep trying to tell people it takes forever to get the air bubbles out. This system here is doing almost four gallons a minute. So we're substantially better than the uh, last heat exchanger. And we're beating the LET heat exchanger as far as uh, restriction. Zero restriction here. But this thing is just full of bubbles. I'm going to try to turn this off and just try to show you guys how many bubbles we got. Because this thing is just bubble city here. I don't know if you can see it, but 
been running for five minutes and we got all kinds of bubbles in the system. This thing is just swamped with uh, air. It takes quite a while to get the air out. Okay, I got a little bit there. Hoping the camera looks better than it does in the viewfinder. Ground this thing again. Okay, and if you can see, it's all whitish. That's because we got so many bubbles going through there. I mean, it's just absolutely riddled with air bubbles. I've had to fill up the radiator quite a bit. It's taken well over a gallon. I mean, we got big bubbles still moving around, and that's because it takes a while to just push them through the uh, inner core. Now I'm going to shut it off, and you can see the bubbles form again. If you notice, you can see little teeny bits of air in there. I call them micro bubbles. Those suckers just don't want to stop moving. Right now, the flow is reversed because it pumps off. But if you take a look, you can see little bubbles moving around. It's uh, it's pretty wild. And this is all because it's uh, a very thin passage up there. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies. And you can just see the bubbles. Just If you kick it, you can start to see new bubbles. And it's just uh, to the naked eye here without the camera. I can just see it just going crazy. But the flow up here is doing real good. Um, we're about four gallons a minute. As we get the air out of the uh, system, the flow will increase because the bubbles are decreasing the uh, density of the liquid, making the float fall just a touch. So it'll probably be about 3.8, 3.9 gallons per minute. And that's doing really fine. I'm all tickled with that. So I actually got more flow. And of course, for the heat exchanger, get back from it, we got this thing in here working and all big and everything. And of course, we just put the little brackets to hold it, and it's in here quite soundly. I mean, it's got a little flex. There's a half an inch gap here. Where'd my finger go? I lost my finger. Ah, there it is. I got a half an inch gap here, so it's not like we're going to be blocking the air conditioning radiator. It can still get air uh, from the edges, top and bottom. And of course, the air conditioner blocks the main radiator, but there's a quarter of an inch gap back here. So there's still plenty of air uh, movement into the main radiator, so I don't think that'll be a problem. We may have the fan turn on a little more often, but the fan doesn't work very much anyway. It's got an easy life. You shut this off, and you can just see the bubbles just migrating. It just, it takes forever to get the little micro bubbles out. That's not a lot of air, but there, there's enough there to uh, make a difference. And you can just see it. Whoops, light fell. All right, we'll get back to it when we get everything bolted down and get it finished up here. Then we'll be set to get.